Hello friends and welcome back to the lab. Today I'm going to share how you can run AI large language models on a Raspberry Pi. And if you're tired of spending money on AI APIs, then you've come to the right place. I know how frustrating it can be using tools like Grok or ChatGPT, which seem affordable at first using their graphical user interface, but once you start using their APIs, it's a different story. They charge per token. And trust me, that bill adds up fast. Whether you're generating blog posts, brainstorming ideas, or just experimenting with AI, those costs can spiral out of control before you know it. But what if there was a better way? Imagine being able to write thousands of blog posts without worrying about racking up a huge bill. That is exactly what we're diving into today. I'm going to show you how you can run Olama on a Raspberry Pi, a tiny affordable device that can handle AI right at home. It's the perfect weekend project that not only saves you money, but can also unleash your creativity with no limits. Businesses seeking AI technical support, check out the link below. If you've ever wished to harness the power of AI without breaking the bank, then you're in luck. Let's get started. I was building a website and needed a ton of content, but here's the thing. I didn't want to spend weeks writing the content myself, and I definitely didn't want to steal it from someone else. And then that's when I thought, why not use AI to generate it for me? It seemed like a dream uh, until I hit a wall. Using LLM APIs was way too expensive. Every token felt like a punch to my wallet and I knew I had to find a better way. That's when the light bulb went off and I thought, wait a minute, why not run the AI large language model locally on my Raspberry Pi? It was one of those Jimmy Neutron brain blast moments that changed everything. So I got to work and over a few months, I used Olama on my Pi to generate literally thousands of pages of web content for free. No API fees, no stress, just pure creativity, artificial creativity that is. It was a total game changer and it saved me a fortune. Now I'm super excited to take this hack, this trick, this method and pass it on to you and see what you create. If I can do it, so can you. So let's dive into the how-to and get your Raspberry Pi writing content like a pro. Now let's set up the Raspberry Pi to run a llama and start generating blog posts for free. If you're new to this, the Raspberry Pi is a small, affordable, single board computer that is about the size of a credit card. It's a favorite amongst hobbyists, coders, and tech enthusiasts. It's super versatile, capable of everything from retro gaming to home automation, and today we're pushing it into AI territory. Specifically, we're using the Raspberry Pi 5 with eight gigabytes of RAM. To get started, gather the following. Raspberry Pi 5, eight gigabyte model. This is the star of the show, priced around $75 online. The eight gigabyte version is recommended for running AI tasks smoothly. Micro SD card. I'm using an Amazon basic card with 64 gigabytes of storage. Power supply, a USB-C adapter delivering at least five volts at 15 watts. You also need a USB mouse, a USB keyboard, and an HDMI monitor. Don't forget to grab a micro HDMI adapter and an HDMI cable to connect the monitor. You'll also need an ethernet cable for internet connection. I highly recommend a fan with a heat sink like I have here. The Pi 5 can get pretty hot under load, so keeping it cool helps it maintain performance. Now let's put everything together. Insert the micro SD card into the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Plug in the USB mouse and USB keyboard into the Pi's USB ports. Any port will do. Next, plug in the ethernet cable. Connect the monitor to the Raspberry Pi with the micro HDMI adapter. Last, plug in the USB power supply. Now here's the cool part. The Raspberry Pi 5 has a built-in bootloader that makes installing an operating system super easy. As soon as the BIOS loads, press and hold the shift key. This tells the Pi to download the Raspberry Pi imager directly to RAM over the ethernet connection. Give it a moment to download the imager. I'm so glad you can now use the Raspberry Pi imager directly on the Pi. Back in the day, I had to do this on my laptop and it was always a challenge. Great, now the Raspberry Pi imager is running right on the Pi 5. This is the tool we need to flash the Raspberry Pi operating system onto the micro SD card. Click choose device and select Raspberry Pi 5. Click choose OS. You'll see a list of different operating systems. We're going for Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, the full desktop version with all the bells and whistles. Select it and hit OK. Next, click choose storage. Your micro SD card should appear here since it's inserted. Verify it's the right one. It'll show you something like 64 gigabyte SD card. Go ahead and select it, uh, but take note that this will wipe the card clean. So make sure there's nothing on it that you might need later. Now all you have to do is click next. The Pi will download Raspberry Pi OS over ethernet and write it to your micro SD card. 
Thanks to the ethernet connection, this should only take about five or 10 minutes. While you're waiting, you can subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a future episode. Once it's done, you should see a message that says, write successful. The Pi might reboot automatically, or you may need to power it on and off. Once your Pi boots up, go ahead through the setup wizard and do all the basic stuff. One thing worth noting is make sure you select the correct keyboard layout. You'll know it's wrong if you start typing things and it doesn't come out correct. After a quick reboot, there it is, the Raspberry Pi operating system desktop. Your Pi 5 is now ready for some AI. We're going to be installing Olama on the Raspberry Pi. Olama is what controls the large language models. An analogy I like to use is Olama is like a race car. You are the driver of the race car and the large language model is the engine. You control the car, the car controls the engine, and the engine can be swapped out with new engines, bigger engines, smaller engines, whatever engine suits your need, as long as it fits in the car, and in our case, eight gigabytes of RAM, which can run up to about a seven billion parameter model, or about one billion parameters per gigabyte of RAM. First, open up terminal, and before we do anything, let's make sure our system is fresh and ready to go. Type in these commands to update Raspberry Pi. Once that's done, we need to install Llama and we can do it in just one command. Run the following command to install Llama onto your Raspberry Pi. This command will figure out what operating system we're using and what version of Llama we need to download. Once it's downloaded, run the following command. If you see a version number pop up, we're golden. Llama is ready to roll. Now that Llama is installed, let's add Phi 3.5. It's a large language model created by Microsoft and it'll be the brain behind our AI magic. I like Phi 3.5 because it's small and runs well on a Raspberry Pi, but still gives great responses. To install Phi 3.5, type into the terminal, Olama Pool Phi 3.5. This will download the Phi 3.5 model. It will likely take a few minutes, so be patient. You'll see some progress bars and it's like kind of fun to watch. Once it's done, let's confirm that Phi 3.5 is ready. Type into the terminal, Olama List. You should see Phi 3.5 listed among the models. If it's there, awesome, we're ready to test it out. Now, this is where things get fun. Type into the terminal, Alama run Phi 3.5. Hit enter to fire up Phi 3.5. Once it manifests, you can ask it a question right in the terminal to make sure it's working. Let's ask it, what is the tallest mountain in the world? Hit enter, wait a little bit, and boom. The tallest mountain in the world when measured from sea level to summit is Mount Everest. How cool is that? Your Raspberry Pi is now smarter than you and I combined. Now let's get fancy and write a Python program to talk to Phi 3.5 with the Olama API. This is where we start to unlock some real power. Open your favorite text editor, Nano, VS Code, whatever works for you. I'm going to use Genie as it comes pre-installed with Raspberry Pi OS and create a file called Pi AI. Here's the code we're going to use. Let me break this down. The code defines a function called LLM that sends a prompt to a llama with Phi 3.5 and gets a response. We're using the request library to talk to Olama's local API at localhost 11434. The test at the bottom of the code asks our favorite mounting question again. Save the file and then go to the terminal to run the code. Type in python3ai.py. You should see Mount Everest or something similar printed to the terminal. If it works, give yourself a high five. This is huge. Your Raspberry Pi is now running an AI chatbot. Now friends, let's take this to the next level and build a program that generates blog posts about historical presidents. This is where we can turn our Pi into a content creating machine. First, create a folder called President's Blog in the same directory as AI Pi. You can do this in the terminal by typing in mkdir President's Blog. Now create a file called AIBlogger.py. Here's the code. In the code, we're importing our LLM function from AI Pi defining a list of five iconic presidents and setting up a folder for our blog posts. The script loops through each president and asks Phi to write a blog post and then saves it as a text file in the president's blog folder. Save the file and then run it in the terminal by typing in python3 aiblogger.py. It'll take a few minutes to write all the blog posts, but once it's done, check the president's blog folder. You'll find a text file for each president filled with a blog post generated by Phi. I ran this myself and seeing blog posts written about Abraham Lincoln without using the internet was honestly mind blowing. A way to improve this code is to create a CSV file with 
hundreds of topics, and then instead of looping through the short list of precedents, have it cycle through the CSV file instead. If something goes wrong, like a file is not saving, make sure your blog post folder exists and that the AIPy file is in the same directory. Most importantly, don't give up because failing your way to success is part of the journey. Now, that's it for the main tutorial, friends. You just turned your Raspberry Pi into an AI beast, capable of answering questions and churning out blog posts. I find it absolutely amazing what this little device can do, but I wanna know what you're going to do with it. So drop a comment below on how you plan to use this project. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, subscribe and turn on notifications so I can see you in the next episode. And as always, be creative and build something awesome.